Zillow found out home flipping was really hard. The shares are now at a 52 week low. Do you buy the dip in Zillow? Talk about that and more today on the Investor Channel. What is going on, everybody? Hopefully, you guys are having a great day out there. I'll tell you what, it'd be a lot better day if you're not a part of a Zillow group, ticker symbol Z. The stock saw that its share price declined 10% today, but I'm seeing in the after hours, we're following through another 7%. The shares are now trading at about $80 per share, which is like $3 lower than the 52-week low on this stock. This stock has given back massive gains over the last few weeks. In fact, earlier this year, back in February, this stock was up over $208. So now it's 80 bucks. So the question comes to a lot of investors' minds, should you buy the dip on this one? Now, over the last year, stock's still up about 9%. That'll likely get wiped away tomorrow in regular trade. Year-to-date, this thing has trimmed itself by 25% from the top. So the 208, I mean, we're down over 50% on this one. Now, Zillow just reported their Q3 earnings. They came in at $1.74 billion. That is up 165% year over year, but it did miss miss street expectations by about 270 million that's probably the small news on the docket for zillow we are going to talk in depth about how they are giving up their i buying which is essentially zillow would make you an offer on your home kind of a cash offer an offer that would close sooner which does appeal to a certain segment of the market some mar some buy some sellers of homes need that money now they don't want to go through closing they don't want to have to go through showing the house list the house. Sometimes that can take 60, 90, even more days than that. Some buyers will take a cash offer, even if it means less money. And Zillow is taking advantage of that. Okay. And they started this I buying unit about a year ago. And we're going to go through the financials and I'm going to show you this was responsible for the absolute explosive revenue growth, which I think some investors were mistaking for a Zillow's business model, just absolutely soaring. But then when we dig into the numbers and we see that they have lost money on flipping houses essentially from the beginning. Now, Bank of America thinks that this is brings up several concerns. Number one, that it showed that Zillow could not handle this type of business. And we'll talk about how the company is literally quitting. They are getting out of the iBuying business. It will take them another quarter or two to wind down their inventory. This is going to be a much, much smaller company from a revenue perspective here in a moment. And I'm going to walk you through. I'm going to show you what business is left over at Zillow and how those revenues pale in comparison, obviously, to something like house flipping. Bank of America views this as troublesome, troublesome for Zillow, but also potentially the housing market as well. The fact that Zillow has all this data was not able to, and especially in the mar the housing market that we're in. I mean, house, housing prices are going gangbusters and Zillow couldn't manage to make a profit in this. This is absolutely astonishing to many investors. And the stock was down considerably today, basically on this news that they are having to sell over $2.8 billion worth of their inventory. Now let's jump into the numbers. But before I did that, I wanted to show you the actual quote from CEO Rich Barton of Zillow. He says, and this is right at the top of the press release of today's earnings. And he says, we've determined the unpredictability in forecasting home prices far exceeds what we anticipated. And continuing to scale a Zillow offers, which is their eye buying house flipping business unit, would result in too much earnings and balance sheet volatility, said Zillow Group and co-founder CEO Rich Barton. And I continue to quote, while we built and learned a tremendous amount operating Zillow offers, it served only a small proportion of our customers. Our core business and brand are strong, and we remain committed to creating an integrated and digital real estate transaction that solves the pain point of buyers and sellers while serving a wider audience. He continues here that the wind down is expected to take several quarters and will include a reduction of Zillow's workforce by approximately 25%. Can you say cost savings right there? The most difficult part of the decision will impact many of our colleagues. Hey, he just throws that in. Notice he throws that in right at the, the end and not the beginning. No, what happened was is the board of directors saw that this company was losing lots of money, selling 
selling, trying to flip houses. It was creating a lot of balance sheet volatility and earnings, and they felt it was hurting the stock. And we see in the after hours, it has not helped this stock, the fact that they've announced that they will quit Zillow offers. Well, speaking of Zillow offers, here's our most recent quarter. The most recent three-month column is our most recent quarter in 2021. We compare it quarter over quarter to a year ago. Talked about how Zillow offers was, was building up over the last year or so. These numbers are in thousands. Notice that they only did, and I say only, for a company this size, $185 million worth of real estate transactions in the quarter of a year ago. That was up 531%. So they really went all in on this quarter. And that's why I'm scratching my head a little bit. They had to have anticipated that scaling this business up was going to you know, create some hiccups. They basically quit on this business very quickly, okay? To jump your revenues by 531% year over year and then all of a sudden quit seems rather strange if I would to say so myself. Now, Zillow offers in the most recent quarter came in at $1.1 billion. That gives us our total home segment revenue coming in at one point basically $1.2 billion. Last year, only $187 million. Now, here's the IMT segment, which is basically traditional Zillow kind of premier agent, you know, basically kind of a service model, kind of an app. And you notice that these revenues are so much smaller, okay? Take a look at this. Only $480 million worth of revenue from that segment of the business compared to 415 a year ago, period. Your growth on that segment is just 16%. When we saw Google grow over 40%, we're seeing even, quote, dinosaurs like Apple and Microsoft growing 20, 30 percent. Even companies like Amazon, which had an incredibly slow period of growth, were growing at that 16 percent clip. So Zillow is not necessarily keeping pace with the other tech giants out there outside of maybe an Amazon. Now, in terms of our total revenue here, we had 1.7 billion. Again, that is up 164 percent. This is what Zillow was putting at the top of press releases that I think had novice investors to a certain degree bidding up this stock. They're seeing that revenue growth is absolutely amazing. Well, actually, no, their core business is where we're seeing kind of the slowdown now. Now, they do have this mortgage segment as well. That has ticked up nicely year over year. It could be that they dump more money and research and employees into that. That gives us this gross profit of $240 million. I notice how they conveniently left out the percentage change when it turns negative because last year, sitting at 420 12 million dollars worth of gross profit now just 240 so you bet you in the home segment of a loan this company lost 421 million dollars flipping houses i'll show you in more detail here in a second how that math kind of works out to a certain degree now in their core business this imt kind of you know traditional zillow app they made 130 million so that is the core business and i do like this business off of that 480 million dollars worth of revenue you pocketed 130 million of dollars income before income taxes and that could include stock-based compensation and some other non-cash charge that is a incredibly strong business but unfortunately, it's down year over year. Notice the previous year, we pocketed $139 million. That is trending down. So you've got pretty minuscule growth rates there. And you've got operating income, which is actually trending down. In the mortgage segment, that actually turned to a loss as well. All things being considered absolute freaking disaster over at Zillow trying to flip these houses like their chip and Joanna Gaines just simply did not work out now speaking of not working out let's take a look a little bit deeper into this revenue and then we'll look at this chart from a technical perspective over at Zillow so here's our three months ended you see here that they have fantastic revenue okay but unfortunately what it is is the cost of revenue in the most recent quarter exceeded how much they actually offered on those homes so they lost $244 million in the most recent quarter selling houses. In fact, they lost about $80,000 per house that they bought. I tell you what, I think there's beginning real estate agents that don't even have their license that probably could have done a better job than this. This is really, really bad because I have family members and myself that have gotten into real estate investing over the last three or four years, and we've done incredibly well, okay? Not obviously at a $1 billion scale, but we've done, it's been, you had to have been an idiot to lose money in real estate 
over the last two or three years. Like literally an idiot. And that's basically what Zillow was. You notice even back in 2020 on a much smaller amount of revenue, about 185 million, they cleared only about $5 million. And this is on the average profit per home. This doesn't include other costs as well, including salaries and stock-based compensation. They only made $9,200. I mean, these numbers are as written right here. These are not in thousands of dollars, okay? This is $9,000 a home. Like off $185 million worth of real estate, you only cleared $9,000 a home and $5.3 million worth of growth profit. Notice after you factor in some cost of marketing and other expenses, notice this average return of homes sold after interest expense. You actually lost money last year, over $7,500 per home. They actually factor, when you factor in some stock-based compensation and some other things, it actually, from a non gas perspective. You actually profited this year on your homes, but the bottom line is this company from a net perspective was losing money in this business and the CEO had to throw in the towel today after only operating that business for a very short period of time. Sure wouldn't make me very confident, quite frankly, in this management group over at Zillow. Now, what we are left with is this core business over at Zillow that just did $480 million worth of revenue in a quarter. If you want to annualize that out, you're very close to $2 billion, very close to $2 billion worth of revenue. And I want to remind you that the market cap is $26 billion, $26 billion. So you're paying nearly 25 times, maybe even slightly over that per sale over at Zillow. If you want to go do a price to sales over at Google, you want to do a price to sales at Microsoft or Apple or anyone outside of probably Tesla and Amazon, well, Zillow Group is going to look extraordinarily expensive. And this is a company that has absolutely fallen on its face in terms of execution over the last year on their biggest growth driver in terms of revenue. In fact, they had to quit that today. Now, what I see here is we have major support for this stock down at $65 per share. It is, we're actually on a weekly chart here because what I wanted to show you was 65 was the peak back in 2018. It was the peak back in 2020. And then once we broke over the $65 level at Zillow, Boy, it was off to the races and we ran all the way up to $208 per share. This stock is continuing to move lower. There was some support, and I say was, at 85. We have broke below that. There is some support here at $80 per share. You go much lower than $80 and the probability and the street will just continually to bet that this one is going to go back down to 65. Me personally, that's where I see this one. If you want to buy it from a technical perspective, you can probably come in somewhere in between 65 and 70 since everybody will be, everybody and their brother will be looking at the $65 level with Zillow and calling that the bottom if and when this stock gets to it. Now, it, I would not want to predict the bottom on this one. How do you not predict the bottom on this one? You look for a break above the previous lows. In this case, you're looking at about $84 to $90 is the lows. And so right now in the very short term for this stock to actually make a reversal, you need to get above $90, preferably $92, $93 three dollars on this one have maybe a week or two where it closes there and that is showing you that potentially potentially look back here it looked like it reversed trench and it continued to go lower me personally i wouldn't touch the stock until you got to know about 65 dollars per share then you could start evaluating whether or not that level will hold and that will be the bottom on this one. Zillow is painting a very, very ugly picture. This company is going to eliminate their fastest revenue growth driver, and it's going to revert back to a business model, which is only growing at 16% year over year in the most recent quarter. And in fact, had lower operating income from a year over year perspective as well. That is, is going to be a hard sell to investors. On top of that, they blew through hundreds of millions of dollars trying to flip houses in the hottest real estate market I think anybody has ever seen. The fact that they were not able to accomplish a profitable business model just seems to me there was a lack of execution there or maybe, quite frankly, I buying houses, buying houses sight unseen and trying to flip them might be much more difficult than people actually think. That was Zillow. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'll be back again soon with more. Good luck with your investments.